Mississippi. Remove the ovens and remove the, the stars, and that's exactly what you're talking about. You're talking about a rigidly controlled society in which it was quite legal by, and I say that tongue in cheek, by Mississippi folkways and mores to do anything you wanted to do to keep blacks in, or in line. Let me talk about my community, past Christian Mississippi, very Catholic, labor union organizing, people returning at a couple of years, have returned a couple of years now from the army where they've been exposed to the fight to make democracy safe for the world. Now they want to make democracy safe for themselves. In order to understand this, we have to look at a society that was entirely based on race, that was making a lot of economic sacrifices on education, both for black and white children. $135 per year was spent for the education of whites. I think the number was $33 for the education of blacks, a totally separate school system. So, but there, was, there were people who were able to work within that system, but at the same time constantly fight to get into the mainstream of America, specifically. If you wanted to register to vote in that time, and it was less than 3% of blacks were registered to vote in Mississippi at that time, you had to agree publicly that you supported the platform of the Democratic Party, which was opposed to Fair Employment Practices Commission, which, as you know, was brought about to create economic opportunity and equality. For, so you, it, the Democratic Party made it impossible for blacks to legitimately and with uh, out a feeling of contradiction vote in the Democratic primary. Then later we had, of course, the the classic case of Smith versus Allwright, which opened up the Democratic primary, uh, which had previously been, been open only to white males. So, but there, was, uh, there, were, there were forces that were fighting for integration even at that time. The Catholic Church was an interracial, open, progressive body, the only one in the state of Mississippi. I have historically identified the church with politics, and I find it very, very interesting that there's such a fight to separate it. And, and, in, and I think in the white community throughout this country, there's a real separation. But uh, there's never been a, a, the same kind of separation in the black community. I think the classic example was the election of John Kennedy because of his call to Coretta King and how the black church organized throughout the country and made the difference. Without the church, there would have been no civil rights movement. Once you get out of the sphere of the church, you're then into the grim world of reality, which said, okay, there is no, don't assume that there's police protection for you. If you're to be protected, you have to protect yourself. And you have to understand that all juries at this time are, black, are white. Uh, in order to be, serve on the jury, you have to be registered to vote. Well, in order to be registered to vote, you have to interpret any of the 285 sections of the Mississippi Constitution to the satisfaction of the registrar, some of whom were totally illiterate. But nevertheless, that was the, the law. And later on, to make sure that even those who could read and write, there was a good moral character law, which said that even if you completed, if you interpreted to the satisfaction of the registrar, all of the 285 sections of the Mississippi Constitution, any white person could then question your character. Of course, your name and address were posted in the newspaper when you registered to vote. So that if you owed any white person money, or if you could be, that loan could be called in immediately. Or if you were employed, your employer would know and you would be fired where possible. Seems but, like a ridiculous system. Ridiculous. Well, it was ridiculous, except when you look, when you understand the logic behind it. The logic was, how do you control an identifiable group that you could, on which you could become multimillionaires, providing they, were, they could be employed cheap, they could be totally controlled, and they would not be allowed to fight for equity in any court or anywhere else. So the peonage system was a reality, and that was the justification for it, that, you know, we, we're going to take good care of these people. Uh, 